little bit more wood lathe work and um, with a little bit of a difference because normally what I do is uh, I turn up uh, dry wood, uh, wood that's been dry for a number of years. So today we're going to do something a little different. We're going to um, turn up some really fresh wood. To get the fresh wood we're going to need this. Fresh wood, nothing like it. I'm really not sure what type of um, tree or shrub this is. I think it's a form of paperback tree. Um, I know it uh, when it blooms it's uh, got little yellow flowers but uh, the one next to it is a traditional paperback tree. Actual fact there's a better there's one there as well. That, that is an actual paperback tree. There's a better example up here. I think they're all species of the paperback. There we can see here. It's, it's very very much like paper, actual fact. And I I believe it was used as such. So let's see how it turns up. If you've been watching some of my videos you might have heard me talk about a Tasmanian blackwood tree. Now this is uh, Tasmanian blackwood. It's very very hard wood. Nice tree. But the interesting thing about these uh, blackwood trees is the birds uh, of which we have a lot around here, parrots and what have you, you you'll hear them squawking every now and again. Um, what happens is they come and eat the berries and uh, stay in the, the, the locale here and uh, they come and sit on the fence and have a crap. <laughs> and what happens is obviously the seed Here's the fence there, you can see in, here's the fence. And they sit on the fence and they, they have a poo and uh, of course the seed drops out and takes root and now we have a fence line of blackwood trees all the way along. Which is uh, quite unusual I think. You may notice something a little different uh, today. I've actually turned my, my lathe around because it was a bit of a job to try and clean up behind it and um, I, I can easily put a sheet there and uh, stop any bits and pieces going all over the benches and what have you. It just makes it so much easier to clean up. And also I've decided to do a slightly larger uh, weed pot, we'll call it. Um, this piece of wood has just caught my eye and I, I think this would be, I think this is going to turn it to be something quite nice. So we'll just um, put it between the centers and um, well, we'll see what happens with it. actually the bottom that I'm actually starting with. It's so much nicer actually to machine uh, wet wood. It's got the um, bottom end squared off. Just gonna I think I'll make this top end a little bit more rounder so I can spin it up a little faster. What I find with the uh, wet wood you, you sort of 
<laughs> you've got to have it spinning a little faster than dry wood otherwise the uh, the tool grabs Just square up this end now. This is actually going to be the top. So I just want to square this up a bit now so I can speed it up even faster. Now what I'm going to do now is start to hollow out the inside. Now what I found the most successful um, way to do this without your tool digging in too much and getting yourself into trouble. What I find is, well if you see the tool there, the point of the tool, okay, is about sort of midway in the material that the tool is made out of. So what you need to do is set the height of this tool rest up to so your 90 degree, oh, sorry parallel the tool is parallel with the work and that the point of the tool is directly into the center of the material there so you're nice and square like so so you actually set the tool height the tool rest height below the center height of the material otherwise it tends to dig in something awful Sometimes I find it easier, uh, especially with wet wood actually, is to bore as much as I can out with a, a spade bit or something um, to get rid of most of the material in the center because it's the center part of the material that you're going to grab if it's going to grab. Here we go. Okay, now I'm going to switch to my bowl gouge, which is a very, very long tool. The reason it's so long is because it gives you better leverage uh, because you, you, the end of the tool is stuck over the, the, the tool rest so far that um, it can make it grab. So it gives you better leverage to hang on to it. And it would be better if I had a sharp tool, I think. Actually, that's looking starting to look quite nice. Now all I've got to do is go deep. It's time for a bit of sand nib. some into this bit of paper back that's left there. Oh, 
we'll let that dry and we'll put three or four coats on. Well, what a beautiful little pot that has turned out to be. Absolutely lovely. So, I hope you've enjoyed uh, today's little video from me on wood turning. And um, if you have, please subscribe and press like. Uh, as always, little red, red box down the bottom corner there, you press that. That'll take you directly to my YouTube channel where there's quite a bit for you to have a look at. So, all that's left for me to say now is bye for now until next time.